Today's Wednesday, September 24, 2014, and you're tuned into the Elevator Radio Show. The Elevator Radio Show is a proud supporter of the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. To find out how you can make a difference, visit their website today, www.eesf.org. Hey, everybody, we got a short but sweet show today, so stay tuned. Here it comes. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It is good to be here. The last month of the, the last day or week, I guess, of the month, which means we're giving away a prize pack giveaway, which is awesome. So thanks to the companies who have donated those great giveaways for that prize pack. Plus, we're giving away a $100 gift visa card at the end of the show. So stay tuned. Hey, if you're watching the video and you saw me walking around, man, I, something's wrong with camera number two. I do not know what's going on, but it looks like... An atomic bomb seems to have dropped inside my office. I don't know what the heck's going on, but I'll have to look at that later on if you take a look at that. But anyway, we do have a shorter show for you today, which is kind of a nice uh, change of pace. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I was uh, I got in early this morning, ended up spending way too much time trying to get caught up when it's nice and quiet. And I realized I'm like, oh, man, I got to I got to get the show out. It's coming to that time, so uh, hence the uh, the need to, to get the show out. Hope, hopefully everybody had a great, great week, or you're having a great week, a great weekend. Uh, if you are uh, enjoying the wonderful weather in your neck of the woods, continue to enjoy, because before you know it, it will be cold, there'll be snow on the ground, and hopefully that doesn't happen for, for quite some time. So um, anyway, yeah, first day of fall officially was yesterday, I believe, and it's just been nice. And, uh, you know, fall is a, my favorite season. And it's the season in which my uh, my two boys start playing football, and uh, my oldest is now playing on a traveling volleyball team. So it's busy in the Cybert household on the weekends after work, and so. But it's not a bad thing. It's just it's just busy. So uh, and we've been pretty lucky in the previous past years to have dodged the, you know, the bullet of our kids doing everything under the sun, which so many families seem to do, and for whatever reason. It seems crazy uh, on on a cost perspective and also at a time perspective in terms of family. So, uh, but it's it's busy. It's uh, not a bad thing at all. Um, just as a side note, uh, next week uh, the ASME uh, standards committees are, are meeting next. I think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Chicago. Looking forward to seeing many of you who are coming in for that. Um, I believe I'll be at the Wednesday meeting. So if you want more information on that, send me an email, elevatorradioshow at gmail.com. So anyway, up next, we'll get right into the news, and we'll have you out of here in no time. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. All right, the first news article of the program is really, really important, okay? This is for many of you out there, and sometimes I question the code and inspectors who enforce the code as to why in the world are we doing this or why is this so important? Well, this first article is the reason why we have elevator and lift codes for escalators and vertical uh, reciprocating conveyors, all that stuff, because... This is what you don't want to have happen. Um, I consider myself a very inventive and mechanical type person in terms of being able to, uh, you know, build stuff. 
Well, apparently in uh, Hancock County, Mississippi, a cargo lift accident that claimed the life of a uh, Bay St. Louis man over the weekend and injured two others has some city leaders calling for routine safety inspections. Yeah, perhaps uh, that's probably a really good idea. Uh, but the reality is here is that this uh, gentleman who um, basically built his own lift device, um, seven-year-old Richard Sandoz died from injuries sustained in an accident. Apparently, uh, he had, he had, I believe the way I am understanding the article, and unless I'm wrong on this, uh, apparently Sandoz built a utility lift attached to his home by himself after Hurricane Katrina, but recommended uh, she hire a, co a company to build and install hers. This is her, her, uh, this is Sandoz's uh, neighbor, uh, and apparently Sandoz had recently tack welded a new floor to the bottom of, of his lift. Uh, never would have expected the elevator floor to f to to fall out. Uh, and with the weather and conditions with the salt water and the and all of that, I guess it took a toll on this lift. So again, um, you know, and this is more than just safety inspections. Uh, the reality is is that um, the reality is is that cargo lifts uh, are covered under code. Some of the, and I'm talking about like you know material lifts, and this is unfortunately more than a cargo lift. This is a lift that's, that's used for transporting people. But the reality is is that uh, this is why we have elevator codes. This is why we have inspections. This is why we have MCPs. This is the reason why uh, we're doing our part to make sure any kind of lifting device uh, meets a certain requirement to set forth in the code. And you don't see people out there basically hooking up garage doors to platforms and running them up and down, So uh, as we've seen in the past. So anyway, yeah. So when you question an inspector who might be, be you know, might be a little bit too uh, strict in terms of what he's looking for or she's looking for, just know that there's a reason for that, as crazy as it might seem, and that is to uh, ensure the safety of anyone, whether they are inspecting, working on, or maintaining uh, lift equipment. So that's my that's my soapbox article of the show. Okay, SentinelTribune.com has a cool article talking about historical center to install elevator. It's going to be in the ballpark of about nine hundred thousand um, dollars. So uh, my only point here, I'm plugging my own my own stuff, is I hope they install C. J. Anderson fixtures because uh, that would be awesome. It would definitely be appropriate for any kind of historic building, and uh, uh, so we'll see if they can do that. Okay, I don't know if any of you get Entrepreneur Magazine out there or have seen any kind of articles in uh, the Wall Street Journal, but um, in the last, actually, the Entrepreneur Magazine had a, had a, a pretty significant article talking about uh, space exploration and how the private privatization of it has really, uh, have has, has companies basically competing for for some significant dollars to uh, to get into space to a to, to make it commercially available, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, apparently, uh, this I'm assuming that this attention has kind of brought the space elevator back into light, and uh, so quite a few articles talking about a Japanese company is going to have plans to have a working space ele elevator by 2050. Um, so. I would love to see the day that this actually happens. And again, I've been kind of a, a pessimist in terms of it actually being a feasible type of program. But this article was uh, posted quite a few other times, this time in Engadget. Uh, and so we'll see whether or not that can happen. I still do not believe that the carbon nanotechnology has advanced to the level where they can build really long, really long stretches of it. And uh, I think uh, one or two years ago when I reported on this last, the longest nanotube type of product they could make was a, I think, six feet. It was like a cloth nanotube, uh, you know, tether. And I think it took them like two years to do that. So um, I don't know. It just seems like it's going to take forever. But I, I hate, I like to be an optimism, optimist, excuse me. But in this case, I just don't know if that's going to happen or not. So um, anyway, I hope I'm I'm hope I'm wrong. I'd love to see a space elevator go on there. I wouldn't want to be the one inspecting it or riding it. But oh well. So okay, next news article: The Gazette reporting the new escalator being installed in Festival Place. I this is one of those articles where I just I just wonder why. You know, they're replacing stairs, and instead they're going to uh, um, they're basically going to install an escalator. And what I I don't understand is it's 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 um, 
It's work is is currently being carried out to replace a staircase outside this uh, Demons uh, store at the bottom of the floor uh, shopping center with an escalator to allow easy access to the top floor. Why can't we just use the stairs? Can somebody tell me that? I mean, y y look around us. I mean, we're we're a country filled with people that could use to use the stairs. All right, and I I'm, I get lots of hate email from people. I know that, but I'm just I'm just saying. I mean, you know what? Let's Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's use the stairs. You know, as long as we don't have some kind of a physical ailment that would prevent us from doing so, use the stairs. Think I use the elevator every chance I can? I don't. So anyway. Okay, quadcitytimes.com reporting Coney Tower still in the elevator business. Well, sure, why wouldn't it be in the elevator business? Anyway, the uh, Coney Tower in uh, downtown Moline will turn um, 50 in two years. What the heck does that mean? But it has no, yeah, okay, so Coney Tower. That's, the tower's not turning. Oh, maybe it is turning 50. You're right. Yeah, no, this is the old tower. This is the old test tower. Anyway, but there's no plans to retire it, uh, which is good news. It is a, basically, it's a major testing tower tool for elevator systems for Kone, and I think that would be uh, unfortunate to see that go, and it's not, so that's pretty cool. And um, this is information regarding Moline Elevator Company, who then was basically uh, purchased um, as Montgomery, and uh, then sold to Kone, and that's kind of a little, nice little history there. So anyway, the company was founded in 1892 as Mol Moline Elevator Company and relocated several years later to Quincy before returning to Moline in 1912 as Montgomery Elevator, and it was sold to Kone in 1994. Man, it doesn't seem like it's been that long since uh, Kone or Montgomery sold. I still remember seeing Montgomery stuff um, back in the day when they were in McKinney, Texas. Remember all that good stuff? Totally remember going to that factory. Uh, yeah, I miss I miss those days. I do. Things definitely have changed. And I got to tell you, Montgomery was one of the one of the first companies that uh, very proactive in their technology, uh, in how they were trying to share and and uh, share information and job stuff. I mean, you know, in '94 computers were just starting to kind of get, you know, more pr prevalent. And I know in our office here, I think we might have had, we only had one computer, everything. Oh, maybe two. We had two. You know, one was for quoting, one was for accounting, and literally everything handed everything was handed into one person who entered orders and all that, which is pretty cool. But back in the day, Montgomery, when they were McKinney, their engineering group would literally, they started a program where they were scanning drawings. And that was at a time when scanners were like four or $5,000. And they were looking for 11 by 17 inch paper uh, scanners so that they could get drawings, which is I think the B size, uh, into their into their database, um, and I, I gave them credit for doing that because it it was not an easy thing to do at all, and I think that was even before uh, PDF converters were out there for that kind of thing. So, or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Anyway, but it was pretty pretty neat to see. You know, I feel lucky enough to be have been in the industry long enough to where. I have a pretty good idea. You know, I, I've seen how the majors in, in other companies have transitioned their their uh, new technology type of stuff. Okay, Sault so St. Marie um, to restore historic elevator, and this is uh, in Michigan, Upper Peninsula. Let's see here. Okay, they're going to be restoring the original elevator in the Century Old City Hall building. That's pretty cool. Uh, federal building was built in 1910 and is on the federal and state registers of historic places. Pretty cool. I'd be curious to know what that looks like. If anybody has photos on it, I'd love to see it. Anyway, the uh, uh, decommissioning of the elevator would have cost about $10,000, and Otis Elevator Company is going to be installing new door lock switches, and we'll cover some uh, holes instead. Hmm. All right. But it's, I guess it's going to stay mostly inactive, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway. Okay, uh, TheVerge.com has a pretty interesting article talking about, uh, again, the space elevator. And this the, the title of this post is pretty interesting. The space elevator hasn't been built yet, but it's already getting its own documentary. <laughs> well, it's about time, isn't it? Yeah, let's put a documentary together about something that may or may not be possible. But I would love to watch this, so we'll see uh, once it, once it uh, gets online if we can. Okay, Newsday.com. Uh, has an article or a news post regarding the Long Island Railroad is going to be replacing six station escalators less than two years after renovations. Oh, I always love this kind of thing. You always wonder who the consultant was on this job or, or, or where the money was uh, you know, used or allocated. 
for uh, these types of projects by the Long Island Railroad less than two years after spending $5 million to renovate several aging station escalators. We'll begin work later this year on a $14 million project to replace six of those same escalators and the replacement of half a dozen Babylon, Babylon uh, line escalators is the latest effort by Long Island Railroad to increase safety and reliability after the March 2012 death of the 80-year-old. Anyway, lots of money to be spent and um, my uh, my hope is that they are following the APTA um, specification in terms of uh, escalators for uh, transit systems in heavy duty uh, locations. Okay, lawsuit over T escalator death uh, has been settled. Uh, the tragedy that occurred when uh, 82 year old woman was strangled in 2009 when her clothes got caught in an escalator has been settled. Uh, MBTA station has reached a $500,000 settlement with the agency court records show and it's a terrible tragedy and it's unfortunate that um, it's really unfortunate that um, any kind of lawsuit occurred because the reality is is that money is not going to make her come back A and B you know it's other than making signage larger before you get on an escalator um, you know, it's it, there's not a whole lot you can do. I mean, anything loose, anything uh, or you know, is 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 going to have a tendency to to, to per perhaps possibly get pulled into, you know, into an escalator. So again, just another reason to support the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Doug Doug has a uh, <laughs> blog post up on his blog, Doug at GAL, and um, you know, it's uh, always like I always I enjoy I always enjoy reading Doug's uh, blog posts because it's kind of a nice recap of what he's been up to and where he's been and the traveling he's doing so um which is nice so uh and doug don't worry about it it's tough to keep up on these kind of things it definitely takes some time but thanks for uh thanks for posting that so um enjoyed that i can almost hear you talking okay buffalo business first as an article pardon the pun but business is on rise for bison elevator i believe this is kind of like a uh, kind of a press release Downtown Buffalo construction boom has meant growth for Bison Elevator Service Incorporated, which is expecting 2014 revenues to exceed seven million, up from 5.4 million in 2013. So great article. I wonder. Um, I'm assuming that the idea behind um, you know these kind of articles is is basically to, I don't know, basically to, uh, um, you know, promote your company. Good idea. So uh, if you're looking to do something like that, probably not a bad idea. So, good article, and uh, link is in the show notes. Next news article, uh, no rats on escalators. Again, can I just, I just want to share my concern and my, my concern for how the media is posting stuff. But, holy crap, this, this, this video, this link, this, uh, this topic was pulled up more times uh, in this last week. Like, there were more articles linking it and cross link linking it than I've I've seen for most articles you know it's similar on that same level to um, the the Beyonce or whoever got into a fight in an elevator I mean it's crazy what the media pushes down our throats and unless we basically just turn it off um, it's there's not a whole lot we can do about it and <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. So yeah, there's basically it's a photo of a rat running on an escalator handrail. Hey, does do you think anybody wants to actually touch the uh, handrail after that? I don't think so. But uh, yeah, kind of interesting. Again, I am amazed that it got this much traction. But the reality is, is that if you watch it on YouTube, uh, Halo, did you do that? Oh. Okay, Google, find me. Dog sorry about that. Um, it's got quite a few hits, so if websites and news media organizations are trying to gain uh, traction, this is how they're doing it, and it's kind of sad because, you know, it's not going to sell, I don't think, anything. So, Okay, uh, Quartz has a, uh, which is actually, I don't really know what Quartz is, to be honest with you, but there's an article talking about beware if your kids wear Crocs and ride escalators. This is really more, uh, this is a larger issue with not only Crocs, but any soft um sold shoes and it is uh, there are holies there's other ones out there that you may not be aware of uh, but the reality is is that uh, yeah these soft squishy shoes um, if they're not ridden on an escalator correctly can get pulled into um, the uh, you know into the comb teeth whatever 
So uh, yeah, kind of uh, kind of scary, scary. It's and I forgot what the material is actually called, but um, the problem is, is that you just got to be careful and make sure your kids know that they have to pick their feet up. You know, ride the escalator properly, step off of the escalator. Don't let your feet run into the comb comb teeth because I, you know, a lot of the situations that actually occurred rather than people actually riding them or kids riding them properly. So. You know, you can't stop stupid, right? Anyway, and then the last news article for this week's program is uh, this man who's, this man who's in the photo coming from the Gothamist uh, news website. Um, 30-year-old woman uh, had an impressive presence of mind to snap a photo of a man who sexually assaulted her in a Queen's elevator last Thursday. This is a little concerning because y you wouldn't think that, um, you know, after being sexually assaulted, you take a photo of the guy just sitting against the uh, the rail, but... Anyway, I'm sure police will get to the bottom of this if you want to, uh, uh, you know, join the fight in this. You can call 800-577-TIPS. That's the New York P Police Department Crime Stoppers uh, tip line. And the, and the image is in the uh, website. I don't, you know, that I have linked up also in the show notes. And um, that's going to do it for the show today, guys. I'm going to give away the prize pack giveaway. And uh, as always, thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. Let me get to my random number generator. Um, and as always, send your emails to elevatorradioshow at gmail.com. Been a little delinquent on that. It's been just busy as heck. Random.org. I think that's the number. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the minimum and the maximum. 1296. Generate. Okay, 303. Let me cross reference that. Number 303. Okay, 303. Ron, actually Ron from Illinois, you are, it looks like you are a contractor and a person who likes elevators. You are the winner of the November 2004, I'm sorry, not November. I don't want to get to November that quick. Uh, September uh, 2014 uh, prize pack giveaway, $100 Visa gift card is coming your way, just as good as cash, along with some great goodies given away by some great companies out there. So check out the show notes for that complete list. All right, everybody. I, uh, I hope everybody has a great, safe rest of the week and a great weekend and uh, enjoy this awesome weather we have, okay? We will talk to you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.